and welcome aboard for another edition of the A Game. I'm Rob Akampora from the Shared Universe Studios here on the Jersey Shore. My usual time these days has been Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. Sometimes we change it up a little bit, but that's the set time to check it out. So make that a part of your routine every week. Now this man, it's only taken me a while, although I've known the man. Here's the scary part, I'm going to say it. As of next year, 30 years I've known you. Something 30 like years. Yeah. Which Might means... a little longer. Might be, but I'm going to go with the fact that it was 30 years when I met Gordon Brown when he was 10. So he's going to be celebrating his 40th birthday next year. It'll be quite the celebration. Are we very 40? Happy. We're still 40. Wow. <laughs> Dude, you're getting better with age. I've lost my hair. Enough said. Come on. <laughs> you wear it well, though, Rob. You wear oh, it thank, well. I, I appreciate that very much so. Gordon Brown has done everything in this industry, and his forte into country music has now been going uh, on about six years now, and we're going to get into William's Honor. That is his lot, baby a now. Lot longer than that. A really? Lot longer than oh, that. okay. I will, we'll have to dive in there. I thought it was only six years, so I, I apologize if I'm mistaken. But to at get least, to- At least 15. At least, whoa. Okay. Well, I, I want to dive into that, but we got to start at the beginning. And the humble beginnings of when I met you was, uh, I mean, give me photo number eight. This was the very beginning. When uh, three guys stopped by FM 106.3 WHCG on the Jersey Shore, which was the alternative yeah. rock station. There's Pete Shearer in the middle. There's Rob Tanico on the right. And there is Gordon Brown on the left. Mr. Reality was this very unique band doing acoustic rock, acoustic pop. There was so many great songs on there. And I, and I realized something when I was looking back on things, Gordon. At that point in time, you were actually showcasing for the industry and wasn't at one point more than words at that point by extreme, like the number one song in the country when you were just starting to showcase and get people excited about Mr. Reality. Um, you know, around that time, it was interesting. Music was on the verge of changing yeah. and we were playing everywhere. And, you know, we started doing the whole label thing and, um, you know, we just wanted to, the way we felt coming from Asbury park, was the same way kids in Seattle felt. We were approaching it a different way. We wanted to do it with songs and big harmonies and stories and, um, you know, really kind of go back to uh, the, the song writing 70s. Mm -hmm. and those types of songs, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Eagles, yeah. things like that, which today, you know, if you're a new act, it's considered country music. Um, for us around 91, 92, you know, we were, still young kids and doing our thing and just, you know, wanting to be different and stand out from the rest. And that's how mm -hmm. Mr. Reality was born. And it absolutely did stand out from the rest doing this acoustic thing that was done so well with songs like anonymous in my yard and uh, waiting for September. It's just great material Thanks. on a label called uh, label called SPK records. Yeah. Interesting story about this. This was a movie company and a very lucrative movie company. It was trying to get into the, the music industry. So in, yeah. a, in a one sense, this was a real opportunity, but it was also, I get the feeling looking back on it, it's like, all right, did they really know what they were getting involved in? Well, you know, it's funny, SBK, when we signed with them, you know, they had uh, a couple little acts like um, Vanilla Ice, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> basically who was Elvis at the time. Right. Uh, you had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they were blowing it up. And then uh, this little act called Wilson Phillips. Yeah. However, they also had Jeffrey Gaines, who was absolutely amazing. Brilliant, it's such brilliant a fantastic man. Fantastic record on SBK. Also, another band from Jersey called The Red House was on yeah. SBK. So, um, you know, we thought we would be in good company and they might use all the millions of dollars they made on Vanilla Ice and um, the Turtles. Maybe they'd use some of that money on us. Right. <laughs> it's weird how things work out, unfortunately, but. It's part of the journey, and it's yeah. part of the education of Gordon Brown. Part of William's honor, he is here on the A-Game podcast. It led to going down several years later. You formed a band called Sam Hill, which was basically the guys coming together, but then you added in uh, a very incredible drummer by the name of Dave Halpern, who yeah. at one point actually played with the Bee Gees on a track. I mean, the guy has done so much work over the last several decades, and he's been a great fit for you. As a matter of fact, my theme song it's from the band Love in Reverse, which he played on. So we there you go. That. Yeah, they're amazing. Those guys were incredible and are incredible. They're mm. back out. But yeah. Um, yeah, in the mid, so what happened was Mr. Reality, uh, you know, we were having problems just being a band. We were going through the motions. We we're learning about the music industry and we started to build 
you know, are and, and evolve really. And yeah. we became Sam Hill and we fleshed out what we were doing with Mr. Reality. Um, and Dave actually had joined in Mr. Reality and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was just amazing. We put him through the motions to to fit and uh, get into this acoustic template that we were touring with. Um, and he was just incredible. So he as we turned into Sam Hill, Dave was there. And we added all kinds of different people from the area uh, and fleshed out the band. And it was, again, uh, just another blast and ended up showcasing at the Pony and, and signing to Epic Sony. And um, again, uh, just another incredible moment for us to jump through the hoop again. Right. Not everybody gets that second chance. And that, that was the, the beautiful part of it. And interesting part of sam hill you guys kind of knew that there was some copyright things about the the name so you kind of knew all right we may not be able to keep the name sam hill so you kind of always had it in your mind like well we're gonna have to come up with another name at some point then some point yeah. happens how does highway nine become the name what what triggered that so you know we're about to sign our record deal and there is another band called sam hill and uh without getting into all the legalities of right it, we decided to make things easy just change a name and uh, Highway 9 became the moniker. It was almost Highway 35, <laughs> but uh, we went with Highway 9 because it is the longest route through the state. And we thought that would be fun. And it was. And we went to Nashville and, and made that record. Right. And then we came back and wanted to put out the record, the country version of the album. Mm -hmm. The label didn't want to do that. And so we signed with RC Nashville and moved to Nashville, moved everybody out there. So that was really the first foray really into country music and being a part of the Nashville scene. Yeah. So we'd been making trips to Nashville as we were touring and, and, and uh, you know, getting out there as much as possible and going to places like the Bluebird Cafe and mm -hmm. Douglas Corner and you know, seeing the in the round and just the, the writing community there mm -hmm. is still and was then and has been for, you know, decades, just absolutely incredible and inspiring. So um, I wanted to get very involved in it. And uh, this is around 2003 now. That's when we kind of moved shop and um, signed with RCA Nashville. And at this right. point, we were trying to keep a band together for 15 years. And uh, I'm very proud of that fact that we we did get that and we right. did get three records under our belt and a whole lot of shows and a whole lot of history between all of us. And it, it was incredible. But at that time, it was just too tough to keep things rolling. Right. And, and then I just started getting involved in um, producing artists and, mm -hmm. you know, doing what I would do naturally with a band, just doing it with other artists that would, uh, you know, really appreciate having that with them. And so I, for the next 10 years, I got involved in doing that stuff. Gordon Brown from Williams Honors here on the A-Game podcast. So in a sense, having that move to Nashville, you were not, you didn't, you became more, let, let me rephrase that. You were an outsider supposedly, but you got settled in and you get adopted by the community. So it became easier for you to work with these artists. So yeah. you really are entrenched. You are full bred country but from what you're saying just to me now, when you talked about the Eagles, that really clicked in my head. You're right. The Eagles back then were country influence. And then when they released their uh, comeback album, Hell Freezes Over, it crossed into country music. So we're totally. seeing that, yeah, the, the trends of what you were doing may have been a little ahead of the curve, but in a sense, it, it, you kind of fell through the cracks. But I think now, as Williams Honor, you've learned all these things and you've kind of taken all this knowledge, put it together, you find Reagan, and it's all starting to gel really nicely for you. Yeah. So, you know, I was out of the band business for a while. I was a hired gun, like I said, working for right. artists and um, writing and producing. And I was on the road for different artists. And these were all country artists. At the yes. Time. Um, and so I meet Reagan Richards. Uh, and all of a sudden, I see someone that wants to work as hard as I do. And we start writing. And we had our first group of like five songs. We started to play mm -hmm. some things for people and had great reaction. And we said, let's let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens. And uh, that's how Williams Honor actually started. Just something as simple as that. Yeah. You know, it's you, you know, when when chemistry hits you and from being in a band and working with artists for years, right. you know, when there's at times it feels like there's some chemistry, maybe some lightning in a bottle. Right. And then you might. Uh, come across or write that one song that people start reacting to. 
And we had a song called Send It To Me that we mm-hmm. felt might have been getting some of that attention. And so we we went for it. And that's, mm-hmm. again, that was the very beginning. And uh, we embarked on making a record at that point and, you know, just going out and playing and getting in front of people and seeing what they thought. That was the introduction of Williams Honor. Since that time, and kudos to you, you've done this independently. Now, what people don't understand, yeah, what people really don't understand, trying to do something independently is difficult. I mean, not having a major label and major money behind you. So Gordon has really just hit the streets, do everything, and basically be one one man operation, but also with Regan by his side. You know, it's this team that they've put together, hence the reason you call it Williams Honors, you know, the WH Army. Right. And totally. Yeah. And you put it totally. together. And what you've done so far on your own, you cracked the top 30 yeah. on the country chart. Crazy. And then crazy. I know. I mean, independent artists don't crack the country charts. That's yeah. just a fact. I mean, it's it's so rare. So not, when not you did, from New Jersey. Yeah, and, from and New another Jersey. good point, Gordon, and not a band, excuse me, a duo from New Jersey, the only country duo from New Jersey. So, I mean, right. that right there had to be like going, we're on the right path. We did something so, that n- nobody could have thought of. You know, I, I, I don't want to uh, I, I don't want to mislead anybody. We have an incredible little team, mm-hmm. a little circle of people that has made all of this happen for us so far. And, um, you know, I just sit there and, and work with all of them. Um, you know, we have some incredible help. You know, we had a radio team when we put our first two singles out of country radio. We have, mm-hmm. you know, people that help us with PR and, yeah. you know, just people that help us survive. You know, yeah. it's been it's been incredible. We're very, very lucky. And we work, you know, we don't stop. This is our lives. This is, you know, it's this or the gutter. So, you know, I don't want the gutter. Amen. <laughs> well said. Gordon Brown's here on the A-Game podcast. And speaking of work, during the pandemic, a lot of bands may have just kind of take some time off. They couldn't tour. No, no. Williams Under decides, you know what? We're going to create a show. We're going to take advantage and do some stream shows. So the Willie Ho Show comes up and this little engine that could which is the best way of putting it starts to get thousands upon thousands of views and then at one point at your peak between september and december you were reaching at about a hundred thousand viewers yeah it was crazy so in september four of our shows ended up i think it was in the top 10 according to polestar magazine yes yeah it was Right, on the Polestar chart, sorry. Yeah. They started gauging for live streams because obviously there was no touring. Correct. So, you know, we're sitting there going, this is unbelievable. And it was just, you know, we had been talking about doing some kind of show because, you know, Reagan is one of the most talented people you ever meet. She's mm-hmm. hysterical. She's a great actress. You know, right. she's one of the best singers I've ever heard. And she is entertaining. So... We wanted to just, we had a concept for a show. Then the pandemic happened and we said, well, why don't we test this and, uh, you know, get into this thing here and do it Mm -hmm. with live streams and see what people think. And then, you know, whatever it was a year later, we just kept going and going. And we did end up in, in the year end, I think we were like number 24 for international live stream. Exactly. Mind boggling. I mean, like I said, it was like on a week by week basis, the numbers just kept going up and kept going up. And like I said, that peak that you hit where you're sitting and going six figures, they're reaching a hundred thousand plus. I mean, at that yeah. point you just go, okay, this concept, it does work. And how do you plan on potentially keeping this concept going in the future? So with everyone coming back right now, we are, we're pulling back from doing live streams because we're, getting back out there, finishing up the next record and Mm -hmm. planning for the fall with a new record campaign. Um, You know, it's important to us to make sure that, you know, we don't overdo something and, you know, that we keep building, you know, our catalog and and what hopefully people are are getting to know us from. Mm -hmm. So the focus now is just on finishing the record. We've got a, a big trip to Nashville coming up. Of course, we've got July 4th at the Stone Pony. Yep. Um, and July 25th, we're starting a new series called um, Pearl. Um, so it's really, um, you know, we just want to get back out and, and get some sense of where we were before. Right. So we pulled back on the live streams and now we're just kind of focused on, you know, a year and a half ago trying to sure. continue. You know, we put the first single, a song called Step, 
mm -hmm. out on uh, Valentine's Day, right before the pandemic. And then all of a sudden this hit and it set everybody back it did. all this time. And now we just want to make up for it and get back out there. And again, let's mention the show on July the 4th. If you're on the Jersey Shore, the Stone Pony is what they call the South Side Stage. Yeah. Uh, tickets are now available. Doors will open at 6 o'clock on the 4th of July. show starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, visit the Stone Pony website to find out more information or visit Williams Honors website to find out more about tickets. Gordon Brown from Williams Honors here on the A-Game Podcast. Gordon, we're going to take a, a bit of a break, but as we go into break, Here's a perfect way to kind of segue into the next segment that we're going to do. Here is Williams Honors video for Send It To Me. After we're done with that, random shots with Gordon Brown here on the A-Game Podcast. Oh, boy. 